Welcome back to Core Cutting Today, where we break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting, including today, what streaming services are most likely to shut down in 2024? YouTube TV has a great new feature, especially for sports fans with the Super Bowl coming up. We'll tell you what that is. And Spectrum is warning customers on the federal subsidized cheap internet plans. Their prices may be going up very soon because money's running out. These stories and a whole lot more coming up in a quick second, but if you're new here, do me a big favor. You can check out the stories I talk about down below in the first pinned comment and in the show notes so you can read them for yourself. And if you wanna help us, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. We will really appreciate it. And hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of television, but still watch the shows you enjoy. So with that said, let's start off with the services most likely to shut down in 2024. This is a list we created here at the office of services most likely to be on the brink. Uh, number one, Hulu. Now, I don't think Hulu as a whole is going to go away, but Hulu has recently been, recently been merging into Disney Plus. And in some areas, um, Star, which is the Hulu International version, is fully merging into Disney Plus would not surprise me if sometime by the end of the year, if we see Hulu become a live TV only service and all the on-demand stuff go into Disney Plus as part of a new bu tiered bundle inside of Disney Plus. We already see Hulu content inside Disney Plus with that, makes it likely. Now, I don't think it's gonna fully go away and especially because I want they are keeping the live TV separate from the Disney Plus app, wouldn't surprise me the future of Hulu is as a live TV service. Uh, Fubo. Now, I get a lot of questions about this. I don't actually think Fubo is going away, but I understand people's concern about Fubo. Uh, Fubo, excuse me. It's a live TV service, but it does not have the financial backing of a major company. Uh, Disney runs Hulu. Dish has Sling TV. YouTube is powered by Google uh, and others. There are some smaller ones, but let's talk about the full featured ones that include sports and locals and others with that. So I think that makes Hulu or uh, Fubu one of the most vulnerable out there um, at this moment. We'll see how that plays out. Sling TV also. The question with Sling is how committed to TV is Dish? Once they get that 5G network focused, they become a 5G company. Are they going to still be um, heavily focused on TV? I don't know the question there, but there's definitely something to watch. And lastly, keep an eye out for some free streaming services. I think some like Pluto TV, backed by Paramount, Tubi, backed by Fox, and other services are just fine. But there's a lot of smaller services out there that are relying on ads. And I'll tell you, ad market is very soft right now. We see that here, we see that on our website, but that puts a very tight squeeze on ad support streaming services. We just saw Sinclair um, saw Stir. Uh, Redbox um, is reportedly having some money problems. It wouldn't surprise me if some smaller, lesser known, ad-only supported streaming services are sold in the years to come. All right, those are the ones I think are the most likely to shut down or be sold in 2024. We already saw Stir be sold just last week. Leave me a comment, what do you think is the service most likely to shut down in 2024? I'd love to hear from you. All right, if you're a YouTube TV customer, YouTube has for a little while now offered a feature where you can um, delay, or reduce the broadcast delay. And the broadcast delay is how long is a streaming service behind a live TV? Now there's some technical reasons behind that, but one of the big ones is it prevents buffering. Basically they preload a you know four, five, 10 seconds worth of content so that if there's a little interruption in your internet connection, that buffering will allow you to continue streaming as if nothing happened. Now, with this, YouTube now offers a um, reduced uh, broadcast delay option, which allows you to watch it closer to reality with that, um, and allows you to uh, maybe have more buffering, but when you're watching social media or looking at live scores for sports, not be so far behind. In the past, you could only enable this for 40 hours, then it would go back to the standard. Now YouTube allows you to permanently set your YouTube uh, count settings, so you always get as close to reality or close to live as possible. To do this, go into your three-dot menu in the top left-hand uh, top corner of your uh, Roku here, go into the settings on your whatever app for YouTube TV it is, select broadcast delay, and select decrease from default, and it will permanently stay there. Now again, you could suffer some buffering. If you're on weaker internet, you may not want to do this, but you'll get a faster connection to what's happening there without maybe having X or Facebook or wherever you're watching ruin what's about to happen in the game. All right, Spectrum's warning. Um, 
the customers who are on government supported internet bills that their internet may be going. The affordable connectivity program is running out of money and offers um, anywhere from 30 to $75 discounts, um, depending on what you qualify for, off of phone or home internet, one or the other, you can't claim both. Now, um, this program needs billions of dollars, about $7 billion of funding to keep it alive. There's some um, efforts to make that happen, but Spectrum is warning starting in April, as soon as then, they could see that their bills go up if it runs out of money. We'll keep a very close eye on this. I believe later in February, they'll stop accepting new people into this program. And in April, the people there will are expected to run out of money with this. So you can talk to your congressman. Problem is this is part of a bigger budget bill. It's not just funding this particular one, it's funding the whole government. And that's a quite the fight right now in Congress. But that's why this isn't directly being addressed. It's because it's part of a lot bigger things. There's efforts to make it just pass a bill just to fund this. There's uh, other people who want to tie this to other things they want to get done and make it as a bargaining chip. We'll see how that plays out. All right, Comcast is facing more class action lawsuits. Comcast had a massive data breach last year. So people were upset that it took them so long to notify customers. Well, there's a growing number of class action lawsuits there. Keep an eye on this. It would not surprise me to see a class action lawsuit actually come from this. Again, I know I talked about this last week. But protect yourself. Data breaches unfortunately happen. I know that sounds defeatist, but invest in uh, maybe credit monitoring. Don't reuse passwords, especially your bank account. Paid services never should be reused passwords. Use a password manager maybe. Protect yourself as best you can. All right, do you miss cable where you get a pop-up letting you know who's calling you on the phone on your TV? Google TVs may now link with Android devices soon to show you who's calling on your TV when you get a phone call. Nice way you don't have to pick up your phone. You can decide if you want to talk to that person or not. Very cable-like experience coming to core cutting with that. For now, uh, uh, Google TV will only be doing this for Android phones there. Could come to more in the future. And you have to link your accounts with that. Uh, 5G home internet, the growth of Corkine 2.0. Corkine 2.0 is the idea that you replace cable with another option, not just for TV, but for internet and all others, completely breaking you free from your cable provider. 5G home internet is one of the biggest aspects of that. And with that, AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile added 840,000 5G home internet customers in the first quarter of, or in the fourth quarter of 2024, excuse me, First quarter could be even bigger. This is expected to be significantly more people than what many cable companies add. Uh, Comcast lost internet customers. Spectrum is reportedly expecting to also lose. We'll learn that later this week when they report their earnings. Uh, but keep an eye on this. Alternative home internet options are becoming a reality. I know not for everybody, but you got SpaceX, you got Amazon launching a space internet service, fiber options for more companies and 5G home internet options, bringing true competition to cable. A lot of people wrote this off, um, like, oh, you know, core cutting 2.0 is really not a thing. A lot of people will come back to cable. Very similar things about what they said about core cutting 1.0. We'll have to see what happens. If you're a DirecTV customer, including DirecTV Stream, you may experience more blackouts. Uh, Cox is warning customers that DirecTV and them are facing another potential blackout. Last year, Nexstar and Tinga. Uh, both had major blackouts for DirecTV with local channels, and now Cox could be next. Look for this to become more and more common. They're all pushing back against these price hikes. And um, with that, be aware though, if you do get blackout, they often ask for credits. You have to claim the credit while it's happening. If you don't claim the credit, you often miss out on it. Let's jump into the question of the day today. I always answer a question in these videos. If you have a question you want me to answer, leave a comment down below. Start off with something like a question for Luke. If I don't answer it in the next day or two, re-ask it. There's often more questions than I have time to answer. So just keep re-asking. All right, today's op, um, question for Luke is, um, if I'm gonna become a core card, do I need an antenna for each TV? An antenna is a great way to I'll watch 100% free content. For most Americans, you'll be able to get your big four ABC, NBC, Fox. I get over 50 channels free with an antenna here where I live. You should check that out yourself. Now, that varies where you live, and not everybody cares. Not everybody cares to get their live channels. Do you need an antenna? No, you do not. Um, do you need an antenna for each TV? 
You can, that's one way to do it, but there are devices like an HD Home Run or a Tableau DVR that will allow you to attach your antenna to your um, DVR, connect that to your Wi-Fi, and through apps, stream it to your Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, and others. There's a great way to do it. I love that because it allows me to um, watch my one antenna that I put in my attic and drop the cable down in our living room, but then I can stream it to my bedroom, our the basement family room we have, and other areas in the house, or through a mobile device or a laptop to watch my antenna all over. And, I, and it gives me a DVR to be able to record and build up a catalog of content there. So do you need antenna? No. Do you need antenna on HTV? You could, that's one way to do it. Or you can look at one of those like network connected DVRs, HD Home Run, Tableau DVRs being some of the most popular ones out there for that. Well, that's it for today. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. It's gonna be a busy week of earnings calls. Very interested in see how Spectrum did in the fourth quarter. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. And we'll be back again real soon.